Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about the difference between communism and capitalism from my perspective. Now, my family was raised and born in the Soviet Union, or at least the former Soviet Union, and I was raised and born in America. So my perspective is going to be of two cultures clashing. At home, I was constantly told about the evils of capitalism, and in school, I was always told about the evils of communism. So I'm going to give you guys my perspective as to the difference and which one's a better system, which one's a worse system. Stay Stick around and find out more. Hey guys, I'm Daniel from Dole Leader Media, and today I'm going to be talking about communism versus capitalism. Let's start off with talking about definitions. Communism and capitalism are strictly economic models, so a communist society and a capitalist society shouldn't really tell you what kind of politicians you have. Ideally, these are strictly how economics are run. Now, the way economics are usually run in a country do determine policies and they do change a lot with the government, but I'm gonna try to keep it simple with just the ideals of each system. Now, let's start at the basics. Uh, so let's start with communism. So communism is a system that kind of became popular because of Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels. They were German philosophers who wanted to create a better system for Germany itself. And later on, a lot of their ideologies were applied to Britain and the United Kingdom and they were meant to be applied to an industrial nation. Communism in its beginning roots was a system that they described as the extreme form of socialism. Communists weren't even really liked by a lot of socialists because they were the the most extreme end of that spectrum. In Karl Marx's book, The Communist Manifesto, when he talks about communism, he's saying this, uh, something that a lot of people don't know. In that time, a lot of people were exploited. There were no labor unions. There were not really any way of protecting uh, people that were working and people were getting exploited left and right. Uh, we see examples of this in the United States where People were working long hours. There were children working. There were no regulations at that time. So their ideals at that time were revolutionary in its own right. And what they were trying to say was that a worker is only a commodity. And as soon as a worker can get replaced, he will get replaced. And if they don't have to pay a worker, they won't pay a worker. Because an employee is not a person, it's an asset to the company. And if that asset could be replaced for something cheaper, like a robot, then they'll easily do that. And that's kind of the idea of what communism was birthed in. It was an idea to stand up for people working really hard. This was meant to be applied to a system like Germany or England, which at that time was absolutely advanced for its time. Now it's difficult to speculate now, but assuming that England adopted communism, maybe the whole system would have worked. But as we see communism, communism is a system where there are no classes and essentially every worker owns every company. So let's say you're working at a shoe factory or you're working at a hospital, you become part owner of that company and you share the profits of the company. They started noticing a trend where business owners became richer and richer and the laborers became more and more poor and they created an idea where everybody gets equal wealth, nobody really gets too wealthy, nobody gets really too poor. We could speculate that it might have worked had it been applied to the United Kingdom or another advanced industrial nation. But the ironic thing is the first country to adopt communism or this idea deal was Russia, which was probably the least industrial nation at the time. I think they only had one or two factories. And a nation who had no industry at the time incorporated a model where laborers, which there weren't really that many laborers, began to share the wealth of the bourgeoisie or the people who owned all the companies. And the interesting thing is in Russia at the time, everybody was just poor. There was just the aristocrats, the wealthy noblemen, and the 99% of the poor people. It's funny because the first movement in Russia that adopted this model were they were called the Bolsheviks. And in Russia, the Bolsheviks are the many. A few years ago in the United States, we saw in Wall Street, the protest that they were saying, we are the many. 
And this is an exact copy of the same protests that were happening in the Soviet Union at the time. The Bolsheviks, which Lenin was a part of and Trotsky were a part of, were the people that were saying that we are the many, yet we don't have the wealth, but the 1% has the rest of the wealth. So in Russia, when the revolutionaries took over the nation and incorporated the system of communism, one thing that many Westerners don't know is that communism was never actually achieved in Russia. Russia was never actually communist. It was always the goal of communism. Communism was the end goal of what they wanted to achieve. And for about 70 years, they were trying to get there, but they never got there. There's even Soviet banners and signs where you see our goal is communism. So Russia was technically never officially communist. It just started incorporating communist ideals and wanted to eventually become a communist nation, which had no classes and all of the laborers were part owners. Unfortunately, that never happened. Now let's look at the other end of this spectrum and let's look at capitalism. Capitalism in its purest form is the ability to have free trade, free enterprise, the ability to pretty much sell anything you want and create some kind of an economic system based on free trade. Capitalism is a system that was able to make America one of the wealthiest nations in history. And it is something that was able to get people the ability to get out of their classes. Now, with communism, you have no classes, theoretically speaking, but with capitalism, you do have classes that are strictly set, yet you do have the ability to leave your class and rise up to another class. Now, with capitalism, there's a lot more freedom in terms of what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do, and there is a lot more opportunities for people to be exploited, but the goal of capitalism is for people to become as wealthy as possible. We see this clearly in the United States. The battle between the Soviet Union and between the United States was clearly a battle between economic systems. And in the end, capitalism won. But now let's look at the downfalls of each system. Capitalism is in itself not evil, but it can easily be exploited by greedy people or evil people. The same can be said about socialism and, co and communism, but it's a lot easier in capitalism because there is no regulations. There's nobody telling you what you can and can't do. Without some kind of regulations and restrictions, you could theoretically sell your children or sell your loved ones, your parents, anybody, and get away with it. There is nobody telling you what you can't do. Another evil, or at least what can be seen as an evil of capitalism, is the ability to have monopolies. People say that you can move up from class to class and you could go from middle class to upper class, but in reality, the people who own all the money have all the advantages. And it's very difficult to rise up to another class. Although it can be done, it's an uphill battle. With that being said, the evils of communism is that with everybody equally in the same page, economically speaking, that tends to be equally poor. You've never seen a communist nation or at least a nation that's trying to achieve communism where everybody's equally rich. That's almost an impossible thing. A lot of people say, let Bill Gates and these rich people out there give away all their money. And if you really think about it, if Bill Gates gave away all of his money, he wouldn't even cover a fraction of our deficit. He wouldn't, if he distributed all of his money to each citizen, everybody would only get about a thousand dollars. A lot of people don't really notice this, but taking away money from the wealthiest people and redistributing it to the poor people isn't going to fix the problem because if you take away all of the money from all the wealthiest people right now, you're not left with a lot of money. Everybody's going to get a few grand. And with a few grand, you're not really going to do anything with that. But one of the things that communism does do is it kills innovation. If you know you're not going to get any financial incentives to do anything, you're not going to want to build anything. You're not going to want to create anything. We do have a instinctive, greedy, um, almost not altruistic, but just we have a greedy desire to do things, to get wealthy, to succeed, and to live prosperously. And honestly, it's not a bad thing. We do have this need to succeed. With that being said, capitalism allows for that innovation. Why the United States is one of the best nations in terms of technology, or at least why it's one of the most advanced in healthcare and other industries, is because we do have this system that allows for people like Mark Zuckerberg, like Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, who theoretically didn't have much. They were in the lowest class or at least the lower middle class and they were able to succeed and become some of the wealthiest people in the world. Communism never allowed for that. Now, me being in the healthcare field, my main focus is innovation and healthcare. And in a capitalist society, 
where there's an incentive to become rich or wealthy and the ability to innovate is allowed, you're going to want to innovate. You're going to want to create new technologies so that you could make more money. The problem with communist nations is there was no innovation in healthcare. There was no innovation in medicine. Nobody really had a desire to go up and beyond what they're supposed to do. In the Soviet Union, a lot of people that had farms or a lot of people that lived in these things called kalkhoze had to give a certain amount of produce or whatever they're raising, whatever they're growing to be redistributed to the rest of the community, which is again, essentially communism. And what would happen was a lot of the people couldn't meet a lot of these goals or they didn't want to. They were just lazy. And so what people would do, according to the stories I was told, is they would put rocks at the bottom of these sheets and then everything would be weighted out to be what they're supposed to give. But in reality, they're not giving much. I know my mom would tell me that they would add uh, sand and they would wet these things and they would do all these weird things just to go around this rationing. And in that kind of a society, it's really difficult to advance and move forward and to innovate and create new things. So the downfall of communism, although it's just an economic system, is that there's no innovation. And honestly, I, I don't know of any communist nation, aside from military innovation, that's actually done anything useful. And even with capitalism's downfalls, such as monopoly, capitalism overall is a better system than communism. The only downfall of capitalism is that it needs to be regulated so we don't have monopolies. We also don't have uh, weird things like children being sold. But overall, if you compare communism and capitalism, communism is a clear loser in the end. Thank you guys for watching. If you guys like this, hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel. Stick around for another video next week. Thank you guys.